Well, I might have been modeling for 30 years, but it still pays to read the instructions and both sets of instructions, the engine and the model instructions, because it tells me that I need that measurement and that measurement um, transferring onto the front of the aircraft. There's such a variety of different engines for this aircraft. It comes with just basically a plain bulkhead. It has etched on the front a center line, which I've enhanced with a pen. And then I've taken the measurements from the instructions and gone 39 millimeters out to here, put a line, 39 millimeters out the other side, and then basically 39 millimeters up. And that's given me the four mounting points for the engine itself. Now the engine itself doesn't mount just straight to the bulkhead because the carburetor will hit on the bulkhead and then also the engine will sit too far back. So what we need is are some spacers which are literally turned up pieces of aluminium with the thread running all the way through. We take the engine Basically, we're just going to throw this together by finger just to show you. And we do this up like this. Obviously, we'll use thread lock and everything when we come to do it. There are four of those fitted to the engine. When we've cut the hole in there, that will fit neatly up against there and the engine will be spaced. Now, the important thing to note on this is that the center line on the front of the engine box isn't actually on the center of the box. This is because when you mount the engine, it has what we call side thrust, and it will be tipped off to one side. When the propeller comes out the front at the center, if you put some side thrust on, if you notice the back of the engine moves across, the front stays still, so the back moves off. So when we transfer this down to the model, when we put our side thrust on, the engine is actually moving to that side of the aircraft. So you notice that that distance there is longer than that distance there. So that's the reason you could get into trouble if you thought, oh, I'll just measure the middle and just go straight down the middle. One thing you will notice is that when we come to fit the engine on the bulkhead, it's not just a plain wood finish. When the kit arrived, it was plain wood. But what I've actually done is use some fuel proofer, which basically is just glorified varnish to make sure that any seepage of fuel from the engine doesn't rot the wood. And now we've got to make some mess. We've got to cut the hole in the front of the bulkhead, which um, is the carburetor is going to go through. So um, this is where I'm borrowing Chris to um, drive the Hoover. I don't want mess all over my workshop. <laughs> Well, that's just done the last bolt up on the engine. That was about an hour's work just to fit all the spacers and um, get the throttle linkage connected. The central hole you saw me cutting out in here has been relieved out round to make it slightly elongated because there are a couple of clearance holes need going around the engine adjustment screws and stuff like that. The throttle linkage comes into the back here, down here. The second rod that you can see just elastic banded in out the way at the moment is the choke lever. Now that I will take out the side of the fuselage here somewhere so that I can pull it on and off without having to take the cowl off obviously to start the engine. I'm not sticking it out the side at the moment because when I lie it flat on the bench like that it's only going to mark the fuselage. Now the other thing that we've done is taken the cowl and cut the hole here for the cylinder head because the engine's slightly taller than the cowling would allow small hole on the front here just to allow a bit of fresh air onto the cylinder head and this is the awkward bit the cowl is nice and flexible but unfortunately with it being flexible it means that when you're popping it about like this sometimes it springs past its mount so this goes on something like this so you can see it's all fitting in there there's still a couple more holes to cut. You can see there's a blanking plug in here to stop any dust going down inside the engine. So it needs a spark plug putting on there. There will be an ignition lead coming out and probably going through a hole just here. And then all this section here will be cut out to allow the air that's been inside the cowling to exit through there. This is actually a scale hole on the full size. So we'll just pop the cowl back off. 
We've got a couple more bits to fit inside. One is the silencer, quite a nice silencer. It bolts onto the side of the engine like this. And then the two pipes pop round the back and it makes for quite a clean mounting. So we've got that to fit and then we've got the ignition unit. Now this is an um, ignition unit very similar to the one in your car but only one plug lead coming out of it. So this is the sensor that um, mounts on the front of the engine, detects the RPM, low voltage, goes into here, fires the internal circuitry, high circuit electricity round here, this goes round, bolts onto the spark plug, bang, away goes your engine. 